This video is sponsored by Arduino Uno. Now that's a lie. It isn't. I just made this timer because I felt like it. And to be honest, I'm not very good at C. Arduino doesn't exactly use C, but it's something like that. I know Java though, so I decided to make the program in Java first, which is what I'm doing right now. And then I copied that into C and then just kind of change the syntax based on C requirements. And that worked out pretty well. So that's how it is. I won't be showing the hardware portion of the process because there are a lot of videos online for the hardware portion but not so many for the software ones. But something that you should note if you want to make this program work is that you're going to have to use an Arduino Mega and not an Uno because if you want four digits then you'll need at least 28 pins and an Arduino Uno only has around 13 so that's not gonna work out. You shouldn't pay attention to the pin numbers that I've written in this program and I've also skipped a few of the pin numbers in this because it changes on the basis of how you've connected all the pins to the Arduino. So that's that and let's get into the explanation. Alright, so this is the program and uh, I have three loops and one main loop, uh, sorry, three functions and one main loop. So here's how it starts off. The first line, in the first line, I'm setting a string variable called time in which I'll basically be storing the minutes and the seconds separated by a colon. And the second line, I'm basically telling Arduino that touch sensor f is to 13 and in the setup portion I'm saying that 13 is an input line input pin so basically the touch sensor is in pin 13 which is an input pin let's go into the first function I'm just gonna highlight it this one calculates the time so it's called time calc in the first line I've made two variables for string min d refers to minutes display and sec d refers to seconds display then i have a nested loop the outer loop is for minutes and the inner loop is for seconds in the outer loop i've made it in the form of a pomodoro timer and uh, so it's for 25 minutes and it, it's going to be counting down because it's a countdown timer so here's how it is if I is less than 10. If minutes is less than 10, then I want it to display 0 followed by the minute. So if it's 2 minutes left, then I want it to display 0, 2 as the minutes. Which is why I've asked minutes display to be as 0. So later when I add 2 to the display, it's going to show as 0, 2. Otherwise, if it's greater than, if it's greater than 9, so basically if it's 10 or more, then it's going to display it's going to need both the positions the units and the tens digit which is why I've set it as an empty string so when you add suppose it's 13 minutes then you can just go ahead and it's going to display 13 as the minutes in the inner loop it's nested so it's going to change for every minute the seconds is going to change 60 times for every minute once again, I've done the same thing as I did for minutes. In order to take up the two spots, one for units and one for tens. And then finally, what I've done over here is that I've taken the initial time string from here and I've added both the minute string, I've concatenated both the minute string and the second string separated by a colon. And then after that, I've just called this function. I'm going to explain that after this. And I've asked it to delay by a thousand milliseconds, which is equal to one second. So this process is going to be repeated every second. Now let's go into the second function, which is function call. Oh, it's just still here. Oh, it's not even till there. It's just still here. So this function is sort of supposed to call the other function which is the last function 
it's not very properly named but I think that's okay it does that doesn't defeat its purpose at least so all good but firstly I have declared a character ch which is going to store the character at a certain position of the string time and then I have this function for the five digits of the time string so now if we count the string time has two digits for minutes two digits for seconds and then one digit for the punctuation between the minutes display and the seconds display so that's why it this i counter is going to go from four to zero that's basically five iterations also i don't want it to can, uh, I don't want it to do anything. I don't want the program to do anything when it encounters the punctuation. So I have just asked it to skip that particular step. The punctuation is at index 2. Counting from 0, if you see, then it's at index 2, which is why I've set i as 2 over here. Otherwise, if i equals to 4, so that's the units digit of the seconds place then that character will be equal to the unit digit of the second place at that particular time and i want this particular function to display that time on my dis on my uh, hardware display which i already showed before and that's another function which i have declared later and I wanted to do for do that for every step. Now, when i equals to three, then that refers to the tenth tenth digit of the seconds. So accordingly, the second digit's display is gonna change. When i equals to one, I've skipped two because I'll explain that here. When i equals to one, then that's the units digit of the minutes place, and that's gonna do whatever it has to do. And then i equals to zero and that's the tenth digit of the minutes place i didn't include hours because the arduino does not have enough pins for that but this is still seconds now time display has all of these parameters if you look at the uh at, at the digit display that we have i'm not sure what it's called but I'm just gonna sh put a picture of that over here but if you look at it then it has seven lines showing the number and then one dot I don't need the dot for this so I just need seven pins that's why I have these seven parameters for the pin numbers and then the clarity is taken from here for each digit now according to the pins that you have you need to set this up for every single number from 0 to 9 I didn't do that because i will just be too confusing but for now I'm just gonna explain one of them to you so that you don't get confused for 0 I want 6 of the 7 pins to be on I don't want the middle light to be on so that's why I've set the middle one as low, the top three as high, and the bottom three as high. Now you can't just, uh, okay, yeah, this is it for zero. Now you need to do it for one through nine, so that the program works fine. And that the functions are done now, let's go into the void loop. Over here, I've set the touch sensor to read whether whether the user is touching the sensor and if it's true right here if this touch is equal to high then we're gonna check if the timer is currently on or off now if it is on then you're gonna turn it off and if it's off then you're gonna turn it on oh and also you'll have to add over here now if so this particular not operator 
I've used the NOT operator is because when on off is false, then you need the condition to be true. So you're converting, you're transferring the false into true for the time calc to be done. And over here, you're gonna change the on off to true because now time calc is on. Otherwise, if on off is false, which is sorry, if on off is true, which means that the time is already running, then I just want all of the digits to shut down. Now over here, I only run that for one of the digit displays, but you need to do it for all four. So you're just gonna copy this code and paste it thrice more and set them all to low. And over here, you can't just write P1, P2, you have to write the actual digit numbers, uh, sorry, the pin numbers. So let's say this is two and then this is three and like so on and so forth. And also at the end of this, you have to set on off defaults because now the pro now the all the displays are off. So that was it for the program. And thank you for watching.